Hi, I'm Max de Groot from the Netherlands, um, based actually in Germany, working in our corporate unit in Hamburg, in the uh, DNT, so the digital and technology team, um, and working on our OSDU project. <clears throat> so during this um, presentation, I'll try to give you in a very tiny nutshell an overview of Terra Nova. So Terra Nova is the, the project name that we gave it, uh, because we're stepping into unknown territory, I would say. Um, I'll give you a quick live demo of the tooling that we use, um, which is coming from SOB, um, and how that works. Then we'll have the journey of the data managers and learnings and challenges, and then a roadmap for the rest of our, of our project. So, yeah, in this very tiny nutshell, it's a big slide, but um, basically what we've been trying to do is uh, yeah, implement OSDU as a test initially uh, into our company. We do this together with SOB, uh, with their SETS tooling, which is the uh, SOB Enterprise Data Solution. And we're trying to, uh, oh no, we actually have implemented, we ingested uh, interpretation data, well data, uh, documents, uh, uh, spatial data, uh, but also completion, so production data. Um, yeah, and we really did this uh, with the point of view, with the data management point of view, we really wanted to prove the data management uh, perspective and that it would improve our workflows. Um, and uh, yeah, create, so prove the ability to prepare and just standardize uh, QC, govern, search, et cetera. We want to have the system of records, so create this golden, golden so-called golden record, um, your single source of truth uh, coming from these multiple, multiple sources. Um, so that's the start. That's where we made our MVP of, uh, which actually ended uh, a few weeks ago. Um, and then in the second phase, we're going into the application interoperability, which you've now seen with a couple of others who presented that should also be a success, I hope. Um, and then after that, I mean, it's on the top of the slide, but the cloud and application strategy. So before we go all in on our cloud and application strategy, we need to prove that we can manage our data as well uh, in, in a cloud way. Um, so this is really the start of of that, I would say. So now maybe bear, oh, wait, before it starts. Uh, bear with me, because <laughs> when I uh, prepared myself for the demo, I thought I could pause it whenever I want, but that requires me, I think, to have a an, an mouse. I'm not sure if this works as a mouse, so I'm going to be a bit quick <laughs> when I uh, when I speak on the demo, uh, but I'll, I'll do my best. But basically, what you see now before I start, I can do already some some introduction here. So this is the um, data workspace, as it's called. It's part of the, the, the SETS tooling, so the SLB tooling. Um, and within the data workspace, you have your data spaces. And basically, your data space, you can, we, this is where you ingest your data into, and we divided this now into different countries. Um, so we in Wintersol, we've ingested data for, for Mexico, for Norway, and for Germany. Um, what you'll be seeing in the demo, though, is data from, from New Zealand, which is public data uh, provided by SOB. The video is also provided by SOB, by the way, so thank you for that. Um, so that's what you'll be seeing. And what we'll do now, we'll, we'll show the process of ingesting um, a log file, a loss file, um, what comes with that. So that there's a legal tagging, there's a QCing, um, and then we're also going to um, search for the data and visualize it and some more data afterwards. Um, but yeah, let's see if I can keep up with the video. So, uh, the data spaces, and now we're gonna go into the ingestion part. So you're gonna browse for your data file, which is now the, the last file. Um, we're gonna add it to a certain data space, and this case is going to be the New Zealand one. So this is the legal tagging, and the legal tagging in our case, for example, for Mexico, every well comes with a contract and the legal tag will really help us to adhere to the contract that comes with it. So if a contract ends next year, uh, the data becomes invisible to an end user. So you won't be um, using data that you're not allowed to use anymore. Then what's now happening in the background is uh, we're actually looking for the parent well. So we're going to link the data to a, to a well, uh, which is the Amakura well. Um, that's happening now. So you go to the ingestion phase, then there's the standardized, which is the mapping in the background. Now there's a quality control, so you can actually, before you continue with the ingestion, you can manually um, check your, your data, so you have the summary overview, 
Uh, you have the JSON viewer where you can look at all the metadata in the background, which is maybe not as interesting for an end user, but for data managers it is. Technical assurance, you put it on trusted. If you are okay with it, you push it. Then there's the approval phase. And now I need to speed up. Uh, approval phase, and if you keep it at trusted, it's only gonna be visible to data managers, but if you go to certified, it becomes available for all the end users. Voila, I think I managed. So now we go uh, try to visualize the data. We're gonna find the last file that we just ingested. Um, so first we're going to, with the filters, look for the, for the wells. You can do this by typing just the name. It will find it. Here you can see all the data that's actually been uh, related to the well. On the right side, you see the related digital entities. Oh, fuck, it's going really fast. Um, lock viewer, so we're going into the lock viewer. We're gonna look at the, the curves itself. If we have markers, you can also add the markers to it. Um, so you can visualize the data before you actually put it in your Patel project or whatsoever. There's also the QC ruling. So the QC ruling, you, you implement some QC rules before you ingest it. This can be the well needs to have a name or the log needs to have a name. So you can kind of make a preset of, of uh, uh, quality. Um, then there's also the document uh, ingestion. So the document is, is linked to, to this well. Uh, you can look at the document viewer. I'm gonna see, no, I'm not gonna try to stop it. Um, it also recognizes uh, logs. It recognizes tables and forms. So you can look at them real quickly. And I'll mention some other things in a second, but now we're gonna have a look at um, uh, some seismic. Seismic, basically same thing, you can look at the trace views, you can have a look at your seismic. Um, uh, you can scroll through it, X lines, cross li in lines, cross lines. Um, you can change the coloring. Um, yeah, you can just basically have a look before you ingest it into um, your Patel project, PalioScan, and whatsoever, where you need it. And now I'm done before the... Oh no, there we go, yeah. <laughs> Maybe going back to the, to the related digital entities. Um, so you can link documents, uh, well data, you can, uh, a field it's belonging to. Um, and, and yeah, so it, you really have basically all the data in one um, visualization. You can see the location of the well. Um, you can go straight away to, to, to wells, documents, like I said, you can, uh, the metadata is there as well, so it's really, yeah, for a data manager, I think it's, it's a, a little piece of heaven, I would say. Um, then the journey of the data manager, uh, or of the data managers. So what we started with for the MVP, as we, like I said, we, we started with, we need to prove the data management part of, um, um, of OSDU. We want to prove that it works, and together with then the sets tooling. So we established an experienced team of data managers. That means we want to have basically a specialist in every uh, segment. So we want to have a specialist in seismic and well data and um, maybe spatial data. Um, so create a, a good uh, experienced team, get them familiar with OSDU and sets. Um, and that's maybe one of the harder things because every time you have a new person coming into the project or you have to explain it to somebody, everybody, nobody, uh, they always mix up sets as OSDU, OSDU sets. Um, so yeah, it, it, it takes a lot of uh, explaining, I have to say. Um, then uh, part three was create testing and criteria to validate sets and OSDU uh, basically against your daily workflows. So uh, we, we do daily stuff as well and we want to make sure that this can be done and maybe even in a better way um, in OSDU and slash sets. Um, gather and prepare data sets across three assets and business units. So we did this for, for Mexico, Germany, and uh, Norway, where Germany is a very mature asset. Uh, Mexico is a more um, exploration asset, and um, Norway is a development asset. So we kind of wanted, to, although the, the data in the end doesn't really differ, but we wanted to have three different types of assets in. Uh, number five, so create data splits. So each data manager has a data set to ingest. So we wanted to have a representative data set. Um, so I was a very tedious job, I have to say, but I tried with all the amounts of data that we have, give every data manager a good, decent uh, uh, data uh, set to ingest. Then um, train the team on, uh, on sets, uh, which was done in six sessions. Um, basically at the same time, so six and seven can be, can be merged. Uh, create a playbook to guide the ingestion workflow so you can go back into your manual and, and have a look how that works. <coughs> um, I have to say that after the training, because uh, it is a very new workflow and it is very new and it's, it's semi-disruptive um, compared to what you do on a normal 
daily basis. So um, yeah, our data managers weren't feeling very comfortable um, in, in ingesting straight away the data after the training. So what we decided on is to do some hands-on in-person sessions. So we went to every business unit uh, together with SOP as well and uh, did the initial ingestion uh, all together, which worked perfectly fine. Um, then document the test criteria and feedback. So of course we had a list of criteria that we wanted to check. Um, so gather the, gather the feedback on this, also gather the personal feedback, because um, it's not always about technical stuff. Um, and then of course during our ingestion workflows we reported some bugs and enhancements. Um, <coughs> it also goes up apparently in my voice, so. <laughs> um, so report these bugs and enhancements. Um, so that we can improve also the tooling. And now this is more about sets than, than, than OSDU. And that should lead us to success. So maybe on the more personal level, uh, or on a human level, because we all talk about the technical part, but there's also, of course, the person behind the technical work. Um, so this should be your, yeah, maybe your average uh, subsurface data manager. He has attention, or he or she has attention for details, um, has a strong understanding of data management uh, principles, um, preferably maybe has a background in geology, geophysics, or, or something related. Um, good communication skills, hopefully. Um, but uh, a data manager's work, and I've, I'm by background geologist, but I've worked most of my career in data management as well, and from my perspective, I think in the last 10 years, my work didn't change that much, apart from maybe a new Patel version or a new GIS version or a new OpenWorks version. But in general, the work itself has not changed in the past couple of maybe decades even. So a data manager's work has not changed a lot over the past couple of years. You might even struggle to get some on board, because why do we need to change? Because this has been going quite well for the last couple of years. So yeah, you might get some um, people not wanting to uh, be part of it. But then if you show them the potential and the benefits you could create and the time you're freeing up, not for actual free time, but maybe for more interesting work, and I think somebody mentioned yesterday the, the Monday morning or the Monday mid or the Monday overall work, you know, these, these things that you actually, they don't bring any value, um, um, you might get them interested again. And this is, of course, not only for a data manager, this is also for an end user, this is basically for everybody. Um, so yeah, if you show them the potential, you'll actually have this very reliable colleague fully working, um, fully on your team, working their absolute best to have a proper database. Um, and as I said, I think this goes for every part of the business. So some feedback summary, sorry, it's a whole lot of text. Um, but um, yeah, so, the sentiment and trust is on the rise. So like I said, after the training, uh, people weren't feeling that comfortable uh, with the ingestion uh, itself, so going on their own uh, with OSDU and SETS. Um, but after the in-person ingestion sessions, people felt a lot more comfortable. So maybe some, some quotes or some feedback. So uh, tools are easy to use, um, cool to see, naming conventions and, uh, um, so cool to see it work quite quickly, naming conventions and the possibility to correct, delete, uh, items that you ingest uh, needs to be improved. Um, the, um, one of the good things is um, that also for some of the bugs, so we, we came up with, with these enhancements and they've actually already been implemented in the meantime. Um, on the other hand, there's also the seismic scanning and ingestion, which can be a bit buggy, that has, can be related to the data that we have, so the data is maybe not 100% correct, where previous tools were less error uh, sensitive, but within OSDU or implementing into OSDU, of course, is a bit more, uh, yeah, difficult then. Um, maybe the last one, the, the, the person is not reflecting the, uh, <laughs> the text, but it's a great ability to link, for example, the documents to Wells. Uh, one thing that we realized, so for our very mature asset, we have um, old, old physical uh, um, reports that we, kind of made pictures of and they put in PDFs which actually have a subdivision in there and that's not being supported at the moment. Um, yeah, so the benefits and it's, it's also I think a first time for everything in our case, 
So to have this golden record, um, you know, uh, merging all your data sources into one, having basically all the data, the attributes to one single data item uh, all together. So your single source of truth, your golden record, um, the data quality, um, although, yeah, so data quality is also always uh, the responsibility of an end user of, an, of a data manager to, to go through the data, to check the data. It's not a silver bullet, but it will help us. And um, yeah, this, this, this automated QC checks that you can um, um, turn on basically before you ingest your data is going to help us to have an initial kind of sorting of, of data quality. Um, upscaling, of upscaling, so the data managers can ingest data themselves and contextualize data, industrialize data management. So I think, yeah, this is, like I said, this is quite disruptive, so it's a completely different way of working. Um, and I think on, in this level, we have not been upscaling um, colleagues in a, in a long time, um, I think. And then the last one is the data-driven part. Uh, I think what you could say there is uh, walk the talk. Um, and I think OSDU uh, will really help us walking the talk and putting data first. Um, so data separated from applications and uh, help us make better, better um, decisions. Am I still on time? Uh, I think we're getting ready to wrap up soon. Oh, you okay. are. So I'll try, I'll, I'll <laughs> skip. So got the, another, another couple minutes. Okay, okay, sure. <laughs> I'll be really quick. <laughs> um, so learnings learned by doing was uh, the most efficient way. Um, so data managed, so the approaches with OSDU and sets are fundamentally different to what we've been doing so far. Uh, data mapping is very complex. I think we've heard that yesterday as well. It's very complex and requires dedicated people with expertise. I'm not sure if we'll ever do that ourselves, but at least we need to be aware that this takes some time. Either we get an expert in or we hire um, somebody to do that. Um, so huge amount of stakeholder management. Um, you really need to keep people on board and keep them updated because they lose track a lot and yeah, you need to keep explaining people. Um, yeah, maybe some challenges. So dependencies on proprietary DDMS for some data types. So uh, for now, for example, for the interpretation data, we use the, the SOB uh, proprietary, propri propriety, yeah, that word, DDMS. Um, and uh, the Technology readiness of OSDU and sets. I think everybody is, when it comes to OSDU, is struggling with, yeah, that you cannot ingest some data types. Um, OSDU is disruptive with a huge impact on cloud data app, uh, app strategy, but also persons. And um, maybe the roadmap, I'll go quickly through it. So we've done now, we're in Q1. We, we finished now the, the MVP, uh, the, the data migration, the sets testing and feedback. Um, we're now going into the uh, interoperability of, of applications. Um, just quickly going through it, we have an, a larger data management uh, project coming up or, or Epic coming up. And uh, later on, we want to do uh, a migration plan in case this is a success, of course. Um, export plan testing, value proposition. We also talked to some application providers like I, IP and TNAV, uh, which we'll be working together with. And then by end of August, we want to make a decision on are we going to continue the OSDU storyline or are we going to stop and wait till there's more improvement? Sorry. Oh, right. no. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank you.